Tash and Bex Flex. Uh, it's good to be back, isn't it, Tash? It is. Because um, we weren't here last week. But um, so welcome, whatever platform you're watching on. Uh, we are up on a breezy hill, aren't we? We are underneath a monkey puzzle tree. It is a monkey puzzle tree, which you can't we, quite see. You can't see. We tried to. We were trying to angle it so you could see the tree, but then it looked like we were looking down on you, bearing down. down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a bit scary. And somebody might screenshot it and say we're Satanists. Yeah, absolutely, and put it all over Instagram. <laughs> so you do have to be careful. <laughs> Don't you, Tash? Oh, uh, anyway, we thought we'd do something to commemorate the death of Lizard Beth. Yes. So, Don't really want to waste our energy on it, but you know. It yeah, is, but it is. We're doing our own take on it, Tash. It is topical as well, isn't it's it? It's very topical, yeah. Um. So we thought we'd have a look at, well, you do you want to go first or second? You go, you go first. Okay, well, I wanted to look at the disappearance, the Kamloop children. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware that uh, the Queen, Prince Philip and Pope Radzinger uh, have been accused of taking 10 children from an orphanage. Oh, it wasn't an orphanage, sorry, it was a, res it was a school, wasn't it? Was it? A Res school. An Aboriginal residential well, school. Well, no, in... it's not Aboriginal no. because it's... Uh, it's in Canada, but Canada. I think it's still Aboriginal No, children. they're no. Indigenous. I did write down what That's they're... what people write, don't they? They all say They are the Tekemloops. Tekemloops. Te Sekwe Pemek. So basically, so they're native, a native American people. Indian. They're a tribal people, yeah. So, um... I first came across this case when I was actually learning about common law and um, law courts and stuff like that. And I bought this book from this geezer. Now, I've shown this to Cameron before when we were talking about law. Uh, so I bought this. I think it was 2019. And the guy that wrote it is called... Let me. I did turn the page down. Where is it? There he is. The Reverend Kevin Daniel Annett, right? So he is a Canadian guy. He is, um, is he a church man, is he? He's a church man, yeah. I mean, he's more, he's more than a church man, but he's, uh, yeah, he's a, ordained as a clergyman in the United Church of Canada. Um, but he's also an anthropologist. Um, he's got an MA in political science. Um, so he's kind of, he looked into this. And then, so he used this as, a, as the case for the first um, International Common Law Court. So the book is really about the nuts and bolts of the case and how to put the court together and all of that sort of thing. But the case was these kids being taken. And so they, they did a proper, proper trial, trial by jury, uh, with witnesses. They invited the Queen, Prince Philip and Pope Ratzinger to come and defend themselves, but strangely enough, they didn't turn up. Defend them? No, but uh, the case goes ahead anyway, as it does in any court situation. If someone doesn't turn up, it goes ahead anyway. And they were found guilty of murder by decree. Um, so that's when I first came across this um, case of the children. So what happened was on October the 10th, 1964, um, Liz, Phil and Pope Ratzinger turned up at this school and they took 10 children on a picnic um, and the children were never seen again. They were never returned to the school and never seen hiding hair with them again. Um, so that's why this Canadian clergyman decided because obviously rumour is rife there. Um, so they were found guilty um, by order of the state, oh sorry, by decree means by order of the state, okay, so it was okay. a state sort of murder, murder by the state. Um, and people say, oh, the case didn't do anything, blah, 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 but Pope Ratzinger did resign. Now, I'm from a Catholic family, popes do not resign. They're not allowed, are they? They're not allowed to, mm -hmm. they have to step, um, they have to die, that's die. the only Death, way. Yeah. Die! Yeah, they can't just go, oh, you know, I'm a bit knackered now, I need to step down. It just doesn't happen like that. No, it works the same as royalty, it works in the same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To, or, they, or they do something really bad and yes. they step down. So he's the only Pope ever to have resigned. Um, and then the other thing that was interesting was that Liz and Phil never set foot on Canadian soil after that ruling. And that was in 2013, that case. So they never, they never ever visited Canada after 2013. 
So that does have an indication that they were aware of it and perhaps didn't want to risk, you know, stepping onto Canadian soil in case they were suddenly lynched or whatever. Um, so I had a little look around and I had a look and I, I was reading the stories that debunk this, right? Oh, yeah. And it was so <laughs> funny. Obviously, we know all about Snopes. Have it, if you don't, haven't looked into Snopes, have a look at the man and woman behind He's Snopes involved, who yeah. are involved. But um, the only thing I could find that debunked it, right, the reason it was debunked, Ash, is that if it were true, it would have been picked up by the mainstream media. <laughs> Love it. I know. I was like, do you know what? I would have bought it if it was there were no witnesses found, um, the Queen and, and Philip and thingy weren't there on that date or something like that but the only thing that they could mainstream. find to debunk it was that it hadn't been picked up by the mainstream media absolutely disgraceful so um i did a little bit of um research on this general thing of the children the indigenous children being taken and used mm. um and between 1863 to 1998 150,000 children were forcibly taken from their homes and put into residential schools. Now I didn't know this, but it was it was law that the Canadian government could take your children and put them in and these what was residential that, to try schools. And turn them into what they wanted them to be. Did they think they were? I mean, there must have been a. I think I feel there was a darker agenda than that. I feel like but they I mean, to the to the mate to the people. Oh, to the people, it would have been. Yeah, we're giving you the whatever, uh, we're giving you the opportunity to to have your children educated. But actually, it was it was. I think it was just to create a supply. Um, so on the 21st of May 2021, the BBC reported that a mass grave had been found. 751, wasn't it? Um, well, this one was 215 children. I mean, they've now found multiple. Yeah, I think it's, I think. Sorry, but this one was just, uh, yeah, the BBC just reported and said that it was on the grounds of the Cam Kamloop Indian Residential That's School. Right. CNN reported on the 1st of June the same thing. Um, but they said it was near the grave was near the residential school. Um, but the mainstream media, the spin on it was it's unthinkable, an unthinkable chapter in Canadian history. And I find it interesting that they're trying to sort of put it into a little chapter as if mm. it's over now. It was a little dark a little era, blip. but actually that's not true, is it? We know that it's still that children are being trafficked Traffic. all so the time. I read that it was 751, but maybe that was people. And that was um, in an article in, again on the yeah it was the it was June 2021, and it was 710. So oh. I don't know whether that was children or people. Rora. Not necessarily. Could have been adults as well, I guess. Could have been. Could have. Um, what I read was well, yeah it was 215. Uh, sorry, yeah, 215 children from three years up. So they went oh, went down as young as three. So we've got more um, here on a, on a stake. Aurora's trying to get into the frame. Um, yeah, so they're trying to sort of act as if it's just a little chapter it's not not something that goes on generally which of course we are realizing um that it is but what i also discovered to my horror is that um because these children they were forced to attend these schools uh the the government would turn up and literally take all the children from your house oh. so the guy who uh, i read some first person witness statement from harvey mcleod um he was at the school in 1966 um, and he basically said that he and his six siblings were rounded up on the same day and taken removed from their parents. And of course, their poor parents went through these school systems. So they knew what was going to happen to their children, but there was nothing they could do about it. Um, he says that the school terrorised him, his family and all of his classmates. They were regularly physically and sexually abused. Um, and he describes this being at the school is similar to being a prisoner of war I it, was it was that very hard. similar to that wasn't it yeah in many ways and lots of children just died because of poor medical care and sort of like malnourished and yeah stuff, and just not just getting not basic yeah, yeah not looking look, not looked after so um the commission says that four thousand died but over several decades it's impossible to yeah. know true numbers yeah. and as we know graves are still being found as you said, there are great. There's been a recent um, finding in Australia, I think, as well, as a of a mass grave of children near a residential school. So I think more and more of this is going to come up. 
Oh, maybe that was the one I was thinking about earlier then. Maybe that's the one with 700. Yeah, that, maybe, yes. it's, maybe it's in. That was recent. That yes. was, yeah. That, okay, that's yes. Australia. So, so we're going to find. So that's the Aboriginal children. So it's yes. always native children. Always native children. And I think we're going to find that it's these Commonwealth countries. Yeah. She used to turn up, do a little tour, obviously go to a school with Indigenous children and take some out for the day. Um, and they never came back. Now, he, he also said, this Harvey McLeod, that. They, they witnessed, him and his classmates witnessed lots of children leaving and never coming back. But in their lovely, innocent minds, they just, they they'd were happy nice for them. Or something. No, they thought they'd, they'd run away. They thought they'd they... escaped. Aww. So they used, he said, we, we'd be happy for them. We thought they'd run away. Gosh. And of course, then when they became adults, they, it was that thing of, well, we never bump into, you know what it's like when you go to school with people, don't you? I mean, mm. you come across each other a little bit in life that those children that had disappeared never, seen, never again. seen again and that's when they did start to as adults started to sort of wonder what had happened to them um but i'm wondering if and this is sort of my hope really rather than a wondering but um now that um she's gone a bit like with jimmy savile is it all going to come out yeah because they wait i think they wait yeah, they're, so they can't they're be protected persecuted. well yeah. they're protected in life because they're protected by the cult membership and stuff but once they're dead so it all comes out something. it all comes out so i think if we watch this space and keep talking about it you know um who knows because i think I think the pedo king will get probably put on the throne, but I don't think he's going to be there for no, long. No, he's not going to be there for long, will he? Because I think we, we don't want a pedophile as our... I don't want a king anyway. No, we don't want to be... don't want to have any of that nonsense. But we do certainly we? don't want but also, kings that um, hang out with Jimmy Savile. Absolutely not, so... That's all right. Just, just, you've got a rabbit ear <laughs> in your hand. I just was like... <laughs> I just want to show him on my T-shirt. Hang on. Oh, can you see that? Bunch of twats! There we are. Right, your turn, Tash. <laughs> What I was going to say about that as well, so if we go with the theory that the royal family are actors, who is it who's actually committing these crimes if it isn't necessarily the Queen, if, if these people are all playing roles? Well, she's she's more of a hybrid So she's an, like an original. Yeah, I, I think there's actor. different. Yeah, because I think that, and I was talking about this to my daughter last night, I was saying this disclosure stuff, um, I think the disclosure is not whether aliens exist and all that and other well, races. No. But more to do with the fact that um, they've been walking amongst us for a long time. Yeah. That's the disclosure. The disclosure is that they're all, you know, they've been with us for hundreds of years. But it's just weird, isn't it? You just got to wonder if we're living in an actor based reality and all of this is scripted and done. Mm. What does this mean? Or what could it mean? The whole, you know, because obviously there's the thing with, with common law and whether that's another kind of psyop. psyop. And of course, let's not forget this thing here. Their logo. It's yeah. not a good logo. No, it's not, is it? Not that thing. The, the wreath. The wreath thing. So it's not a good logo. So it make it opens up millions of things, doesn't it? Yes, it what does. What is the purpose? If it is, if we are, if it is all actor based and all this is all scripted in to part of whatever it is that we're living in, it just makes it even more intriguing. Doesn't so it? are they? Are they doing it to wake us up? I have no idea. What's going on? I have no idea. But when you think you, because you, if you flip from different theories and you try and put them all together, that's when it becomes. Yeah, but like, whoa. But we're not all from the same test tube, are we? That's how no. I look on it. So you've got the real human beings like us, then you've got the skin suit beings, then you've got uh, the, the, hybrids. the hybrids. So it, it, that's what I'm saying. There's more than one mm. thing here. And that's, that's the disclosure, I feel, is actually that it's made up, the world is made up of all these different, different things. things. But they're all playing different parts. All playing different parts. And you and just wonder what it all, though, like, is and, that, oh, I don't know. I know what's real, what's not? Exactly. Who's real, who's not? Who's real, who's what not? What story's real? What's, what's going what, on? <laughs> and what are they put out for? What's the benefit of yeah. some of these stories? Why? You know, yeah, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely crazy, and we're, but I love trying to make sense of it. That's oh yeah, that's our favourite thing, isn't it, Tash? Because obviously that the the ridiculous queenie that somehow managed to be full of life the day before and shake the prime minister, the new prime minister's hand, then died the next day. Yeah, but she was tiny. The CGI, you said it to me. She was tiny. The back of the sofa was right to her ass, <laughs> where she would have sat. She it was, was placed wrong as well with the fireplace. Yeah, isn't it? the whole and thing the was... light was wrong. The shadow was wrong. She wasn't there. And anyway, you can't oh. swear um, uh, an MP in. In a foreign country. In a foreign country. Yeah, so. it's Scotland, wasn't it? Yeah, so but that's it's like, not what true. gets me is how the normies can seriously think that she was fine then, and then on her deathbed and died that quickly. You know, if she, there's, there's rumours that she died of uh, bone cancer and stuff like that. She'd have been on a syringe driver and really, really sick. For of a course few weeks. she was. You know, this whole like, 
it's just, just incredible how she managed to the day do before. that the day before. And then she, and she just died. It's like, what's wrong with you? Like, honestly. Because I've been having, where I've been working, oh, the telly. it's been a right week, hasn't it? For it's you? been horrendous. I felt very ill from the telly. Yeah. So it's gone from, she normally has on about 75 to 100. And she's refusing to do anything in the other rooms where I'd normally do my work. Oh, she's got to stay, so I'm stay having attached to, go, to the TV. Yeah, she's got to be attached to the TV. So I'm having to go into the TV room to do things. And it, oh, I can't explain it. It's just evil. And I can't hear her talk. She's like, I'm going, I can't hear you. And all you can hear is just this blasting of this, whatever it is, this satanic shit that they're doing, driving yeah. round and whatever it is they're doing. And oh, I can't tell you how, I think very, well, damaging it's been. And even she was saying, I felt quite happy and, you know, well until I started watching all this. And I just said to her, well, turn it off. Yeah, said, take, I'm take here a hint. for four hours. It's why don't we you just, feel why don't, and why don't we just oh, yeah. do stuff? Yeah. Then Chat. you can watch it later. Have said, a conversation. She saying, all it's doing is repeating itself. And yes. Saying, yes, we'll turn it off and then do. we can. That's how they brainwash people. Yeah. Repetition. And then she's like, I'm feeling like really down and depressed. And I was like, oh, goodness yeah. me. But she Not still surprised. couldn't. She still had that attachment that she might miss something or miss a story and the stories they were portraying was just disgusting i couldn't even all the members of the public phoning in about their encounters with the queen and it oh, was just shame that some and philip and holly um, and oh they're disgusting yeah it the whole is. thing is so well and i disgusting. did say as well this week it's really showing people's true colors actually like, like, for example, Anna Brees and what's the other, that other woman, Katie Hopkins. Oh, yeah, they're all Anybody yeah, that is, supporting is, the Queen, Lawrence Fox. Yeah, they, then it tells you where they are, where they are with it, because anybody that's truly awake knows that this that is That is the Charles, isn't it? Yes, that, that's, that, the, that's, that's the one. That's the original. The original, can you see him in there? And that looks nothing like the Sausage Fingers one. Completely oh, different fingers. hairline. Those fingers are disgusting. But that one is who, if whoever the real Charles is or whatever it is, that's the one who I believe to be. The original. And doesn't he look like his dad? I mean, it could even be his dad. I thought he had a different father anyway. Well, yeah. Allegedly. There is that. As well. there is that, that well, none if they of even are. have And sex. then, of course, there's the other thing that they're, um, they're, they're all... females anyway, and they're all inverts. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, what, what is it all about? Who knows? <laughs> but that was the original model. <laughs> yes. And now we've got sausage fingers. And his, and his face, eyes are too close together. And his lips are thinner, and his hairline's much further back. Yeah, it's just not the same geezer, is it? No, it's ridiculous. Not the same man. So, I got sent something by a Harry G from Instagram. Thank you, Harry G. Thank you, Harry. You sent me this thing, and basically, it was written by somebody called Patrick Scrivener in 2017. And he got this information from various books. So, we've got the biography of Britain's Queen. Uh, the Queen Mother, The Untold Story, um, The Little Princesses, the Little Princesses, uh, Lilibet, An Intimate Portrait of Elizabeth II. So this is all the his Royals. references that he's so used. So that's the references he's used. So I looked at those, all because obviously I haven't got time to read them or anything like that, not that I'd want to. Gosh, no, we're far too busy to read. <laughs> so what I did is I did look at the book reviews from them. And it, it was a bit confusing because all the book reviews are very mainstream. Mm. And I'm not entirely sure how this person got this information from those books. Because when you read the reviews, it's mainstream. There's nothing there saying, oh, the, yes, the Queen was one of her twin. And there are all these things that, which you would have that thought allegedly would have come have out. Said. Which you think, if someone's doing a book review, yeah, they would they have would done. Yeah, they would say, wouldn't they? So I will just put that bit out there that I'm not entirely sure. We've not read books, have we, We've not Tash? read the books. But the main book that he talks about is The Little Princess, which is written by uh, Marion Crawford. And it was published in New York in 1960. And basically, she was the governess, which is like a teacher and a nanny rolled into one, wasn't it? For, mm -hmm. the, um, for the royals. It's very British to have a governess. A governess. And basically, this guy is saying, in 1926, twins were born in London to Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, Lyon, which is obviously the Queen Mother. Mm -hmm. And she named them Elizabeth and Lilibet. And then in 1930, a girl named Margaret was born in uh, Glamis Castle in Scotland. Yeah. So basically, she was the, 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 the um, nanny, and then she ended up writing a book. And when she wrote the book, they um, excommunicated her, and basically she got ostracised completely by the royal family. Is that even why? Even though before that, she was very close to them. Yeah. She was very close. So this book was called The Little Princess. So she must have made a choice to get that out, because you would know, wouldn't you? If well, I publish this, they're never going to speak to me again. What happened was... I've written it down somewhere, is basically she was only given a very small pension and a small house to live on. And she was contacted by an American uh, uh, publication called Ladies Home Journal. Oh. And she was offered $80,000 tax-free for her memoir. And she went ahead. 
and the book the book was published in 1950 so that's why she did it, it allegedly why she did it mm. so interesting so the theory is is that the british empire has been ruled by two queens since 1953 um on uh, the 3rd of june 2015 um, there was a behind-the-scenes rehearsal at the BBC on how to handle the death of Queen Elizabeth II. And this ended with an apology as one of its reporters, who was called Ahmen Khawaji, uh, he tweeted that the Queen had passed away. Now, what this guy is saying, that that was likely that that was Lilibet. It was the two so twins. So one of them had So passed. one of them had passed away, and that's why they did this whole thing. And I think that quite a lot of people went on about it, didn't they? Was it 2015? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember? There was yeah. this sort of like... There's a little... And what this guy is also saying is this book, it writes about little princesses and only a keen observer could identify them as twins. So he's kind of saying the way the book is written, you need to probably delve deeper. So they were, so she's probably writing perhaps about Margaret and Elizabeth, legitimately in the book. But however, if you were to pull it apart, you'd realise that they're actually talking about two children of the same age. That's how I perceived it. So she wrote about it sort of covertly. Yes. Okay. But if you look into it. So maybe I it is see. worth a read. I don't know if anyone's read it. But it is it um, even around? Because they yeah, take these yeah, books out. Yeah, you can out, still get they? it. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, that, so there was, that was the rumour that in 2015, Lily, Lily, Lily Beck died. So one of the twins. So they're basically born on April the 21st, 1926, in Mayfair. King George the fifth, the fifth was on the throne. Yes. They were delivered by C-section by three top doctors. And then by law... Um, the Home Secretary had to be present as well to prevent a repetition of the warming pan plot. Mm. So I was like, what's the warming pan plot? So oh. that was a papel plot yeah. to give tyrannical King James II a male heir by smuggling baby, a baby into Mary of Medina's birthing chamber in a warming pan. Yeah, so they were so, going to swap the babies. Yeah, so from then onwards they had to do that. I'd hate to give birth in front of bloody someone from the government. Yeah, and, and three male obstetricians. Can you turn around, please? <laughs> yes, it's happening, guys. It's happening. <laughs> and there's also some sort of like um, thing. Apparently, if you have twins by cesarean, you can't have a firstborn because they just pop out. They're not born. Or you have to choose who to or pull you, out Yeah, birth. or you choose. And, you know, yeah, if you're the cesarean, yeah, you so can't you can't do that. So ah. there's that, apparently, in one of the books that kind of implies that there was a problem with knowing who the firstborn was anyway because the fact that there was yeah, two. Yeah, true, good point. Um, yeah, so the Home Secretary says, so when, when they were born, apparently Lilibet showed supernatural intelligence uh, and Elizabeth was quite normal. She liked so, her horses and her dogs. What, you mean supernatural abilities? Yes, yes, and so she supernatural was intelligence. Or... Yeah, there was something about her. She had something... Second sight. And incredibly intelligent, whatever you want to call Ooh. it. Ooh! Um, and obviously, seemingly, Prince Albert... Um, who was Elizabeth's wife at the time was the father of the twins. However, Albert, Elizabeth's husband, as in the, the Queen Mother. So Prince Albert, Elizabeth's wife, was the father of the twins. However, Albert was later to become King George. That's so who was oh, originally oh, called God, Prince it, Albert. Oh yeah, because they changed. <laughs> yeah, and then they changed. Day. Yeah, oh, so confusing. So then he became they, he became King George the sixth. Yeah, um, but he had severe psychological and physical problems. And basically was impotent and uh, he didn't have um, air conditions, basically. He couldn't have passed. He wasn't conditioned to be an heir. So there's no way he could have sired any children. Wow. So. So he was he. So he was just that everyone thought he was, he was a father, Jaffa. But he wasn't. He was a Jaffa and quite intellectually. He was a bit. Allegedly. He was not the sharpest tool <laughs> in the box. Yeah, but isn't that a bit like Charles? Well, when you inbreed. Mm, that's what happens. You get it? very low you IQ. You get very strange things, don't you? Yes, you do. So these twins were isolated from all of their peers. If the twins were seen by outsiders, it was said to be that one of the twins was Margaret. So they kind of made, made one to appear to look older, different hair. Or just passed it off just that say, way. And people listen, people say it was Margaret and Elizabeth. Mm. People don't or think, two oh, little girls, yeah, they're just going to assume. It. Yeah. Um, and they, um, that it was total secrecy from the moment of their birth. They were always accompanied by adults. They were never allowed to mingle with children um, because it was said that adults can keep secrets, but not children. Mm. Because children tell the truth until they grow up and are controlled by the adults. Which is so true. apparently they were never allowed to sort of... That's sad. Yeah. So it was Quite in 1932 that this um, Marion Crawford became their governess. And the reason she was recommended, because apparently she was incredibly discreet, but she also had training in children who were different or special. So Lilibet's intellectual ability astonished her tutors, whereas Elizabeth just literally played with her cats and horses, dogs and horses. She was very much quieter, not really very anything. And apparently Winston Churchill was in awe of Lilibet when he visited. 
So people like Winston Churchill obviously knew then. Yes, because he was one of them anyway, isn't he? They were yeah, all part so of the same. if you're in the gang, you knew. Yeah, so basically it was princess, and I've always thought when there's pictures of the Queen, there's definitely one that's prettier than the other. Yeah, I thought that as well. From along, you know, when you look at the old pictures, you think, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, she's quite pretty. And yeah. other times I'm like, oh no, and all twins, there's always a prettier twin. I know it sounds horrible. <laughs> there is. But there it's is. There is one that's slightly higher grade. Yes, there is. <laughs> so Princess Lilibet was the one that married Prince Philip in 1947. She was pretty, wasn't she? She though? was the pretty one, yeah. So, um, And she was the intelligent one by the sounds of it. By the sounds of it. So absent from the wedding was the former King Edward VIII and none of Philip's German relatives. So that's quite strange in itself. And then Lilibet was crowned Queen Elizabeth II in June 1953. So according to her secretary, Lilibet didn't shed a single tear on hearing about the death of her father, because he wasn't her father, probably. So everything was always prearranged before the tour. So her secretary had the um, accession paper with him. All she had to do was sign and choose a new name for herself, because they always give themselves a new, a name. new name. And she chose the name of her twin, Elizabeth. So this is what it says. And then the other interesting thing that was in this document that this guy sent me is there was a, a group called the WAG, W-A-G, mm. which stood for the Way Ahead Group. And it was chaired by the Queen and founded in November 1992. And it was formed to discuss critical issues facing the monarchy. The meetings were twice a year, normally January and September. All senior royals were present, bar Diana. Some say it was um, no coincidence that the separation of Charles and Diana took place in the month following the very first WAG meeting. Is that one? I wonder if that's why they formed it to yeah. work out. Yeah, because it's get 1992. Rid of her. Yeah, not an old one, is no. it? Um, and uh, interestingly, um, it's assumed that the meeting of the WAG group was moved to July the 20th, 1997, so it could give the green light for the assassination of Diana. And it was uh, Lilibet, not Elizabeth, who, who wanted her assassinated. Yeah. So the funny thing was, apparently Lilibet absolutely hated opening Parliament for lots of reasons that you can't really have a Parliament and a monarchy. You know, there's, if you look deep into it, it's all a bit bollocksy. It's all a bit bollocksy, isn't it? Apparently she never liked to do it. So that was always left for Elizabeth. And actually, whenever you look at the Queen in the par those roles, well, I'm gonna look the ugly now. one. I'm going to look now. I'm going to be looking back. <laughs> but it's like the ugly Queen, you know, the stern one, the stern, one that just Send the ugly one happy. to Parliament to be with all the uglies in there. <laughs> it's, it's all the cast offs, All the ugly it? uglies. Yes. So basically, there is a theory that they were twins playing one role, Lilibet being the privileged, intelligent one, and Elizabeth the underdog doing all the shitty jobs. <laughs> so basically, she was like a shadow twin. And quite often, um, you hear of these shadow twins in the elite yeah. uh, actor-based reality mm. roles as well. They do yeah. apparently all have ones who play the yeah. lesser roles, who aren't the famous ones, the slightly ugly ones. But for us... You know, we just wouldn't really notice. Well, and they could get away with it in dark glasses and whatever. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like basically... They're just despair. Yeah, and really. they're basically the sort of like... So when these creatures are perhaps created, or whatever these creatures are, yeah, perhaps... Um, they have a, a, a twinny. Twin. The same with the um, skin suits, I suppose. Yes. You just put it on. If you had these two queens and she say, let's say she played another role, mm. you'd dress them both up and they could both do that role. And that's obviously why... Because um, the lady I work for is going on about, of course Charles is going to get snappy, of course he is, he's been working for X amount of hours non-stop. And it's, of course he hasn't, has he? All no. these various, well, none of, we saw that thing this morning, didn't we, where that guy was um, watching it live on telly, the, 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 the coffin, it was pitch black and he showed it was still sunny. So, I mean, you know, how much of it's just, and then, but then everyone says to Theater. me, but then they say, but my great aunt saw them go past her house. You know, you've got that thing that comes next, haven't you? But, but you know, my, my auntie in London, she's, saw them drive past so they probably do a certain amount of it yeah for theatre and then once they know the crowds are gone or what have you or they're inside yeah once they're inside and then they just no one because they're making there. it obviously they've driven all the way across the country mm. and done this that and the other all the way down from scotland all the way down from scotland but the whole thing is is like for theatre it's just it's ridiculous isn't it they're just actors they're just all actors and they're doing an absolutely shocking job i'd say the queen whoever she is lilibet whoever the lizard might be um was potentially quite a good little actress <laughs> yeah she was she was quite a good little actress she was um yeah quite good and i would say the stern miserable one is definitely you know you can you can picture the two pictures can't you mm. it definitely is a two from right from early on they portrayed her as two different people yeah one that's pretty and the other's not so pretty not so and very pretty. stern and, and very stern. opens parliament does all the <laughs> shitty jobs <laughs> she's probably the one who has to come and do all the opening ceremonies oh. 
Oh, you bet that's her, the one who has to come to like the Royal Naval College and opening up toilets, you know. Oh, yeah. I cut this bit of Cut this stuff. ribbon. Yeah. I draw this curtain back from this statue. It's probably statue. her, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably poor Elizabeth got all the shit. She got the shit end of the stick. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So, there we go. But again, it, all it does is just open up more um, questions, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think at the moment, guys, more than anything, just keep calling out the connections to paedophilia because even if we don't say anything else, we know for a fact that Andrew hung out with Epstein and Charlie Boy hung out with Jimmy. There's also, isn't there, did you read that there was also, Charles has got another half-brother who's in a Canadian jail, a Canadian. No, I haven't heard who, that, um, that one. For having sex with a minor. Oh. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I can find his name. Yes, there is. Um, so, what, so Charlie Boy's got an ugly twin. Is, there, is it possible to be any uglier than he is? <laughs> yeah, he's probably the really, no, it's not a twin. It's just another brother, a half-brother. Okay. okay. There's Andrew, Charles, and then an old, I think it's an older half-brother. Uglier one. Uglier one. Yeah, and apparently um, he's, yeah, in, maybe even Canadian. Because I know there was another royal, wasn't there? I can't remember who it was now vaguely, uh, but it was the generation before, and she had a really bad learning difficulty, and oh, they just stuck That was Elizabeth's, her. it was Elizabeth's niece and auntie, wasn't there? There's two of them, and they both got put into mental health institutes. Yeah, they just yeah. got locked yeah. away and left to, you know, dribble. And then, of course, the son, wasn't it? The one that we did when we did that one before. We yeah. touched on the Queen when we were So they do about... quite often hide babies that aren't right and just and there's gonna be stuff, a lot of them. stuff them away. And, uh, yeah, because they inbreed. So it's it's a Russian roulette whether you're going to get a decent baby. Of course it is. You need fresh blood. But yes. What it, but all it does to me is just make me go, oh, my head hurts even more because these people aren't even real. Yet with all these, we're talking about these stories like they're real and like the Queen did give birth. Did she? I mean, ah! I know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? We do these deep dives ah! and we just confuse ourselves more and more and more, don't we, Tash? It's just like, like, part of me thinks, well, they're not real. It's just an illusion. It's just this. And then I'm like, and then you read, oh. And then my head just gets me. I think it's a combination. I think there's a lot of different beings here. Yeah. Created in lots of different ways. And, you know, we're just working it out. And they've been with us for many hundreds many, yeah. of years. Actually, next week we're going to do a little dive on that one aren't we i think we need to do one on looking at hybrids and skin suits you know and um the personality traits of certain people who aren't yeah. necessarily hybrids but that they're, they're working for the hybrids yeah that sort of thing yeah we're going to do we'd, i think we need to look at that and the fact that a lady did a lot of research and found that most of these people who they thought were transgenders actually all favoured the female skull, whether they were male or female. So that was people in politics, yeah. people in um, like the churches and stuff like that. Yeah. So the males and the females, even though they thought the females were male, their actual skull shape was female. Yeah. So is it a hybrid? Is it? Yeah. So there's there's we'll another layer. There's another layer to that. Woo! Ooh, don't fall off your log, my log. Tash. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, have we done? Is there anything else to add today? Um, I don't think so. We, I think we've covered. I think we've. I think we're done. You know, destroyed. Aurora was good. She didn't knock over the camera. No, Rory didn't knock over the camera, and we've managed to, you know, have a little chat about Queenie Pooh. So yeah, Monday I will be um, doing Ugh. something completely well, at least different. I'm not working. Thank God, I'm not working. No, you're not working. Otherwise, oh you'd have to God. sit and watch it, wouldn't you? Oh, imagine. No, I mean, I'll probably either be out in nature. Or on the beach or something, I think. Yeah. I'll probably just go out. And don't forget to not clap. People clap? Apparently they're doing a clap. Oh. I know. And, uh, like they did, like we had to do through, well we did I'm surprised, we were saying lockdown. earlier, weren't we? We're surprised that nothing more has been done to try and disrupt. Yeah, I mean. I'm really surprised. Well done to that guy that shouted out, but he's now being done for breach of the peace. Must be breach of the peace. I can't see what else I could do him on. But he's definitely being charged. It says in the BBC. But more people need charged. to do this. But if it was, you think about all the people that went to the, you know, the London marches mm. or whatever. Why can't we the same thing happen? Yeah, but not a march, an actual just be disruption, there. just to disrupt it worldwide. Cameras, yeah, yeah. you know, all look like we're all there. And for, it's for live. The it's live. Yeah. I don't understand why nobody's organised it. You old paedophiles. Yeah, just paedophiles. What about the Kamloop children or whatever? Just, just loads of those, just disrupt it. I mean, imagine if you had, you know, 750,000 people who were there, not for, for her, you could make a lot of noise. They can't arrest everybody. No. And they can't prove who was who or who was doing what because it'd be too many people. You'd be shouting what? Yeah, it'd be too hard to... 
So I'm a bit confused why. Yeah, where are you all? Mm. Come out, come you, out, you wherever you are. Yeah, what, Monday? And they open, I want to open the coffin. Oof. Well, she's not in there, is she? <laughs> Well, there might there. be something, it might be a bit of lizard skin in there or something. Um, <laughs> but wouldn't that be funny? Like, da da! And then there's like, there's nothing in there. There you oh. go, you a bunch of weirdos. People mourning. But yeah, I would I would go up on Monday, yeah. Mm. But as far as I'm aware, there's nothing organised or. Mm. Because lots of these people who organise these things are actually all part of it and they're, they all love the Queen because they worship exactly her. That's the opposition. problem because if they weren't controlled opposition, something would have been organised. But wait, the limits stop when it comes to the Queen, doesn't it? You notice that's like you said earlier, that's when yeah. it really shows. You know, if there's someone, because the Anna Breeze thing was funny because she put up a thing, I've opened a group for everyone to put their condolences and then <laughs> everyone everyone was just like, she's a paedophile. <laughs> There wasn't one nice no, comment. There wasn't one. And I thought, Anna, you've just been red pilled, my love. Bless but she, you. She knows, though. They know. They know who the queen is, and they they're choosing. You know, they they, they can only it. go so far, and yeah. then they have to show their allegiance. Yeah. And their allegiance is to, to those queen. people, to yeah, Queenie, to the queen. Yeah. Otherwise, if they didn't, they'd be calling yeah. it out. Of course, they would. All of them. Yeah. All of the people who people think are good, you know. So what did Russell good... Brand say about the Queen? I haven't looked, so I don't no. look at him, but I, we ought to have a we look. We ought to see what he did, because it'd be interesting. I'm sure he'll be... Um... Even if they do it in a subtle way, they'll still say that she was good for the country or, or something. He, he won't be saying, get yourself up to London and make a noise about mm. it, <clears throat> basically, will he? No. So it'd be interesting to see. But that's your indicator, guys. If they're being all royalist, you know that they're controlled opposition. And if they're calling out the paedophilia then you know that they're genuine. Yeah, absolutely. Genuine, yeah. All right, well, look, we'll be back next week. We're going to have a deeper dive on this. Yeah, I think that's a good one. We need yeah. to round that up a bit, don't we? Well, and also, you know, I've also bought a book. So I'll have try you? And, yeah, I've got a book. She's got a book. I've got a book. <laughs> so I'll try. Are you going to read it, though, Tash? I'll try and go through it. Yeah. Or listen to... Skim some, read it. Listen to her. Oh, look at this bit of hair here. You're going to cut my hair in a minute? Yeah, we're gonna, we, both, we both have really big hair, right? And then... Like yes, we, we both we, cut our hair. We both cut our hair, but my, Tasha needs to do the back of mine because I can't. Mine's see just it. gone like I'm a pubic head. Oh, what's that I'm pubic bit? head. It's just sticking out. Yours, like... is got, yours is nice. Yours is beautiful. I just look like a pubic head. No, so I used to get don't. called at school pubic head. Pubic head. Yeah, and now I'm a pubic head again. But <laughs> look, I've just like got long bits here. Yeah, but I, you, because yours is <laughs> curlier, it just bounces out. Mine just hangs like a bloody mop mop head. Right, let's let's cut the back. Yeah, we're gonna sort my hair out, guys. <laughs> see you next week. Bye. Bye.